Welcome to another episode of ResX, an Indigenous lifestyle show for everyone. My name is Cadmus Delorme. And I'm your co-host, Erin Goodpipe. On today's show, we have a whole bunch of awesome stories from the 2015 First Nations Summer Games held in... Ochapaways, First Nation. Ochapaways. Do you know where that is? Um, I just know it's by the place with the awesome bread. Broadview bread. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. Once you go Broadview Ooh. bread, you don't go back. The Summer Games had over 2,500 athletes on this reserve that's capable of holding about 1,000 people. So it was quite the week. Wow. Old Chapways did awesome. We were there, Resex was there. Uh, we seen about 2,500 athletes, mm. 40 dogs. 40, only 40. Okay, that's <laughs> not too bad. Did you bring your dogs? No, 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 no. There was enough there. It's to... mating season, <laughs> <right>? so, you, know? <laughs> you know, when you breed with res dogs, you always get these unknown breeds. So I just left my dog at home and just enjoyed the view there. <laughs> but it was a great week. It was a great week. Resex was there. Um, and throughout the episode, we're going to highlight um, some of the people that we interviewed, some of the venues that we mm -hmm. were at. So um, without further ado, check it out, guys. Sit back and enjoy Resex. First, we begin with the opening ceremonies for the Summer Games, which was held behind the school on the Ochapways First Nation. And then we talked to some competitors, some athletes, coaches, and parents in the preparation for the games in each athlete's sport. Check it out. The Treaty Four Territory. Welcome to the Ojibwe's Nation as we proudly host the 2015 Saskatchewan First Nation Summer Games. No, uh, actually, the, uh, the the feeling uh, walking through those uh, those uh, those entrance uh, gates uh, coming onto the track is just uh, it's, it's overwhelming. It's uh, it, it 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 never gets dull. It's uh, it always gives you that uh, very uh, supportive feeling and uh, an appreciative feeling. Something real special. Uh, this is my second year actually participating. I like hanging out with my friends, like playing soccer, my favorite sport, and. Yeah. For me, it felt awesome. I felt like I was part of a team. I was full of pride, and I, I felt really happy. I'm most looking forward to um, sitting be behind the bench with the girls, cheering them on, um, seeing them come closer, unite, and possibly, hopefully, we can medal this year. Well, I think the Indian Summer Games, as they were known when they started in 1974 on Cody First Nation by uh, the former chief, the chief of the day, Tony Cody, I, I think really started a, a wave of pride building and in, in, uh, building self-esteem for, for our young First Nations uh, kids. Uh, I know with the amount of kids that look forward to both the summer games and the winter games every year, we've really built momentum into uh, giving them something to look forward to, something to work, work hard for, something to uh, get together, meet new, new kids from across the province. And, and something just to compete and, and make new friends. So it's, it's a great motivator for our kids. Uh, enjoy themselves, work hard, play hard. Um, uh, don't get sad if you don't win a medal. It's all about participating. But as well, uh, to carry themselves in a respectful way because uh, I always say you, you don't have to be elected to be a leader. And so as young men and women, we lead in a good way. They can lead in a good way. Uh, lead, uh, walk with kindness and love, respect and caring. Uh, lead a healthy life that's free from alcohol and drugs, you know, because their young, their young cousins, young relatives are watching. And uh, so that would be my main message to them. And, and to never, ever give up on their goals and dreams and perseverance because I was sitting out here too when I was 14. And uh, I was very happy to participate. And uh, it influenced me. It was, uh, I've seen role models. It helped me with that. And uh, here I am as national chief. Uh, well, it builds, builds a lot of capacity for them to work together as a team. It helps uh, all the community members come together and keeps us connected as First Nations people. And as we strive for the future ahead, we look forward to seeing all these youth become something great, great athletes, such as a young member here from Ochapaways, Ethan Bear. And we hope that our athletes can continue to strive for that sort of type of success in their days ahead. I think what it really does is it instills confidence and pride in their community and their team and their fellow uh, competitors. Uh, a lot of pride with uh, with uh, 
uh, participating in these games uh, on behalf of their communities. Uh, and I, it also uh, builds a lot of friendships that will last a lifetime. I think with, uh, with opportunities like this, I mean, if you look at around tonight, a lot of kids, they make new friends, they develop into close friendships, whether it moves on to the international scene, local scene, provincial, but you build a lot of friends and character by participating in events like this. Wasn't it awesome to see all the excited faces of all the athletes? Let's continue. 12 days before the games saw the Lance run. The 300 kilometer journey began in Muscaday, the site of the 2013 games. Rezex was there to check out one of the runners. Check it out. The great community of Muscaday, Chief Boston there and his great council. And tonight our young people, both from Muscaday and Ochapoe, are bringing the Lance in. They're bringing it home here to the games. Let's introduce and let's welcome home our Lance runners who ran all the way from Muscaday. My name is Shailen George. I'm an athlete of First Nations Summer Games. I was a lead runner of the Lance Run. I kind of just volunteered myself because I heard that they needed runners, so I said I'd try it out. It was. That's indescribable, like words can't describe it. It just made me really happy. It's exciting, like, um, it's fun. I just like showing other people from out of the community where I live and just everything. <laughs> it was great. I felt really honored and you could feel all the energy in, in the staff as you're holding and running with it and it gives you, like, it gives you more energy to run and keep going. And, um, just, yeah, it keeps you going, <laughs> like, it makes you feel, um, makes you feel stronger. It's history making when we see our children run this far in all kinds of weather to bring two communities together spiritually and working together in unison with the advice of the elders. It's very emotional. I was getting kind of sad. I wanted to cry because I've gotten so close to all of the people from Muscaday and I didn't want to like leave them. And but I was also getting excited because I was able to see my family and yeah, it just made me happy and sad at the same time. <laughs> I was kind of thinking like, oh no, I'm not going to be able to see these people anymore. They're my new family and I just, they're going to be leaving soon. And I was just, I don't know, I just got really sad and but also happy because I got to see more of my family and my community members. We had about 18 people on our run for 12, 12 days and uh, we were greeted by a lot of reserves on the way. They fed us, they took us to ceremony, they, they did what they can for the runners, for our elders. We want to present this to Chief for, uh, we carried this the entire way with us on the, on the one of the trailers and we all signed it for you there. So there you go, Chief. Thank you. Throughout the week, Ochapways hosted different events at the Athlete Village. This was a time for the athletes to come together, share the culture, share experiences, and just kind of unite and mingle. One of the events was a round dance and hand drum demonstration. Resex was there. Check it out. I started off by doing uh, the, what's called the Lance Run for the Summer Games. I was the head Oscapio Osaka, as known as an elder helper. And then uh, we uh, then I, uh, we ran the Lance for 12 days to get here to open up the games. And then now they asked me to be the head elder helper here you know, for, the, for the game. The modern day round dance is known as a, a social event now. But then back in the day, they used to use it to dance with their spirits, that, uh, at a, at a dance with their, with their loved ones that I passed on. But nowadays, just, uh, just, uh, just to get the kids around the, uh, the drum and the cultural aspect of things, 
just to just to introduce them to the to our to their uh, culture. As you can see now, if you if you look at the boys that are in front and how much singers that we have, it's it's that boys right there that actually went out and went to a round dance before, and they went to and then they listened to their elders of the community to uh, pass on their songs, and they've been they've been going to these events just by looking at it now. But then for the ones that don't know it, you know, it's that's why we always bring it out. We always try to do our best to showcase it. The Athletes Village was happening beyond just the round dance. They had a hypnotist, they had a dance there, they probably had a couple snagging grounds. <laughs> but the Summer Games Athlete Village, that was just a little piece of what they had throughout the week. Ah, stay tuned guys, more from the 2015 First Nations Summer Games right after the break. At Access, we love technology. Not the kind that costs an arm and a leg and does stuff you don't need. The kind that makes your life easier and more fun. Like the new Access Evo. You won't believe what this box holds for you. Welcome back. With over 2,500 athletes at the Summer Games, ResX was trying to capture stories and journeys of these athletes. We were able to sit down with four different teams or divisions two golfs and two baseballs. And they shared their journey about what they're doing at the Summer Games and maybe even what they want to do after the Summer Games with the sport. Check it out. So I'm standing here with gold medalist Shay and Brittany Patra, who just won the juvenile and junior women's division in golf at the, at the First Nation Summer Games hosted by Ochap. Brittany, um, over all the Summer Games, um, What's something about the summer games that brings you back year after year? Um, I like I like camping a lot, and I like I don't know. You come and you meet a lot of new friends, and that's also fun when you win. So that's something that brings me back: winning. Winning competition, u uniting, meeting new people. Why? What is it that makes you play golf? What's your drive? I'm not talking your driver in your bag, but what what makes you come back to the golf course day after day? Um, get a good score. Nice, get a good score. You know that if you get a good score, you want to get another good score. That's a good, good answer. So, Brittany, wh where is it that golf do you think will take you if you pursue it year after year? Do you, do you have inspirations of, of going anywhere with the game of golf? Well, I've got a, an invite to go on a college team. And that was, so there might be a couple more offers. So that I feel like college would take me even further into golf. I'm not sure where I would go. I don't know if LPGA, but big dreams, I guess. You know what? And those are attainable. Uh, LPGA is uh, the highest of all female golf. College is just one of those steps to get there. Thank you, very, thank you girls. Enjoy the summer games. Yeah. Okay, I'm standing here with the 2015 gold champions in the juvenile junior men's I have Ethan and Kenley from the Onion Lake Tribal Council. Congratulations, boys. What is one thing that someone sitting there watching this show that, that, that would hear from an athlete that you look forward to the summer games every, every time it comes around? Uh, probably just meeting new people and yeah, pretty much the sports and other stuff. <laughs> the food. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, meeting people, you know, we're all Treaty 6, Treaty 4, Treaty 2, all from different areas. We're all here for the, for the sport. So what is it about golf that brings you back to the golf course day after day? Uh, it's the fun I have going out with friends, family, and just getting better and better every day. It, it, golf is a game where you, um, you strive every day to get better and better, and every day is a new day. Uh, being from Onion Lake, um, you know, future ahead of you. Uh, any aspirations in the future of golf? Maybe golf uh, college, uh, golf school, anything like that? Yeah, golf college is for sure on the list when after I'm done school. Mm -hmm. From there it goes on. Well, college is just one one move. So one thing I learned about uh, my two friends here is I got uh, Snoop and Biggie beside me. I, I, I got that told to me. Uh, I was asking for these two gentlemen. They're like, oh, you mean Snoop and Biggie. So that's a very great nicknames to have. And uh, that music carries on in a lot of generations. 
But with that, I would like to thank my two friends here from Onion Lake. Uh, signing out on ResX, thank you. So I'm standing here with the Pee Wee boys, Prince Albert Grand Council, one, way away, one win away from a gold medal. So well, I'll start to my left here. What does it mean representing PAGC here at the Summer Games in Ochapoes? Uh, it means, it means good. Uh, I love playing for PAGC and yeah. Let me talk to the coach here for a second. These boys put in a whole summer of training for this event. Oh, yes, um, tell us some of the things that they go through during training and how it's going to pay off once they get that gold medal. First of all, it starts with a lot of uh, workouts and training and drills and hopefully we can get that gold medal with all of our training and hard work. That's right. Hey, the best of luck in your gold medal. Uh, this is the Pee Wee Boys PAGC. Best of luck, boys. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm standing here with MLTC, Meadow Lake Tribal Council Pee Wee Girls here at the Summer Games. Let me start on this side. Um, what is it that drew you into baseball to come to Ochapways to the Summer Games? To represent MLTC. Just to represent them. <laughs> Representing, that's right. What's the next level? Any of you want to take baseball to another level? Yeah, I want to. Pitching. 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 So you, you're a pitcher right now? Yep. What are some of the skills that are needed to be a pretty good pitcher? You just need like, to aim and um, timing. Aim and timing. Anybody sitting there watching the TV, what would you like to tell them about your experience at the Summer Games? Please. You should come. Yeah. You should, you pretty should, cool. it's pretty cool, you should come. Anything you want to tell them about the Summer Games that you enjoyed? Mm, it's pretty fun, there's lots of people cheer you on and it's just encourage have fun and encourage you. Encourage people to come out, it's about uniting. Thank you girls, the best of luck at the Summer Games. Always so great to hear from the athletes and all their accomplishments. We from ResX are so proud of you. On that note, we have a beach volleyball demonstration for you guys to feast your eyes on. Take a look. Hey, my name is Michael Bob. I'm the FSIN 2015 Summer Games Beach Volleyball Events Coordinator. This is a demonstration sport this year. And uh, having this venue, this beautiful venue put up, put up by Chappers First Nation, it just showcases this beach volleyball sport. The families were out and supporting the tribal councils. So it was well, well received for sure, this event. Beach volleyball is actually a sport that's in, you know, it's in the mainstream, it's in the Olympics. It's actually, you know, it's in the provincial, provincial games. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, so it's just a natural fit for the FSIN um, summer games to actually incorporate it into it. Our, our First Nation youth are very volleyball orientated. They love the sport. Winter games are, the, every every tribal council has a team and in the summer games now, this is just an extension of that sport being able to be hosted by the summer games. And, you know, so it's, it's actually very, very well. It keeps the kids all involved as well. It's another sport added to the the, the sports that are uh, that are being offered to the summer games so th there's more kids being involved so that's that's the main thing that we want to see where are the coaches from BATC North, in North Battleford and, and we have the under 16 girls and under 18 and the 16 and under boys our under 16 women just took silver, silver. and then our under 18 girls are going for gold we're really proud uh, we were kind of scared to bring them because this is our first time coaching but they almost came out on top and pretty proud of them. And hopefully our 18 girls will win gold. Either way, we get a medal and we're excited. <laughs> we just got the call to come be coaches yeah. and I played in the summer games before. And, and then winter the winter games, games I played for volleyball. And we, yeah, and just, we have experience in playing yeah. volleyball. Yeah. It was really fun and it was nice being out in the sun all yeah. week. I need 10 if you're not 10. <laughs> <laughs> well, I burned, but it was good. Yeah. I would like to watch it again and coach it again too. I'd like to extend uh, our thanks to the Saskatchewan Volleyball Association for offering their support in any way that they were, you know, they, they came out and assisted, assisted us in hosting these games and getting everything that we needed, they provided. So, and uh, the families, the tribal councils, they all came to support their teams, which is awesome to see, you know, and they were here to, all week supporting them. So for any, any of the youth, any of the parents, any of the uh, coaches let their tribal council know that this sport was well received. They enjoyed it. Their their kids enjoyed it, you know. And 
this is something that we will be taking back as the Ochapwe's uh, events coordinators and talking about each of their sports, how they went, and making a report back to FSIN. So a anybody that you know wants to see, wants to support this, should should express to FSIN that this sport should be in future FSIN summer games. Woo wee! Those volleyball courts sure were hot, just like the weather. And I can't believe how big they are and the capabilities that they can house with the mm -hmm. volleyball nets. They're huge. It's Be amazing. Being a demonstration sport, kudos to Ochapways for bringing that in. Yeah. So, so let's see your set. Let's see your volleyball set. Oh. Your turn. Bannock bum. You must have been a sub in high school. <laughs> this is a spiker. You feel that? That? As my either my dancing move or my set, I'm not sure yet. Ooh. I was a sub in high the bannock school. bum more like. <laughs> the <best. laughs> so, so define bannock bum. This is not a rated R show, <laughs> Don't go anywhere, uh, guys. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Any event of this size needs tons of coordinators and volunteers to be successful. The First Nation Summer Games manager Sheldon Watson overseeing the games. With all of his coordinators and other managers, Sheldon was the person that had a lot of delegating to do. ResX had a chance to talk with Sheldon about the overall success of the Summer Games. Check it out. Okay, I'm here at the First Nation Summer Games in Ochapways. I'm standing here with Sheldon Watson, manager of the games. Sheldon, what are some of the day-to-day -day activities that a manager has to do at the summer games? Um, well, primarily Cadmus, we're here to oversee, uh, to ensure that all, uh, all of our sports on the games agenda start on, uh, start on time. We need to ensure that there's officials there uh, and then all rules are, are being followed uh, as laid out by the provincial sport governing bodies. For sure, there's a lot of different governing bodies that are a part of the summer games. Uh, for the sports, for the uh, security, for the first aid. Uh, how much work has to go into the summer games? Someone sitting there watching this show, when do you prepare for the games and uh, how much preparation is needed? Well, uh, we were awarded the games uh, approximately two years ago. So I came on board as games manager about a year and a half ago. So uh, we're given two years basically uh, to identify our needs for the games uh, and uh, in, in preparation. Uh, we need to ensure that uh, all the games that are on our agenda uh, are, are looked after and that the needs uh, for those games are, are in place. So we have approximately two years to appoint coordinators and uh, start identifying the work that needs to be done and, and putting committees in place to, uh, to follow through and do the actual work. Yeah. Uh, being a member of the Ochapways First Nation, the legacy of the uh, 2015 Summer Games, what does it mean to you and maybe some of the elders or other members that you've talked to, uh, the legacy that this is going to impact on this reserve? Well, for us, we're very fortunate with a lot of the sponsorship dollars that we did receive. Uh, we were able to build uh, some, uh, some new infrastructure here for the games agenda. Uh, you know, we have uh, one of the finest beach uh, volleyball courts uh, in the province here in our backyard. And that's a legacy. So with, with the legacy that we do have in place, uh, here with our infrastructure, we're able to ensure that the children of Ochapoes will have an opportunity to continue to develop uh, in, in, in archery, in, in softball, in soccer, uh, in athletics, golf. So uh, it's an opportunity for us to utilize the, uh, the infrastructure we have to ensure that the uh, future generations of Ochapoes uh, uh, can play sports can go forward and continue that sport. Well, I just got to say, as a, someone who's interviewed some athletes and helped out with golf, there's many, many cheers and happy people here. Uh, it's, it sounds like it's a success. Uh, I just want to say that uh, it's, it's been a, um, a pleasure being on OCHAP. Uh, is there any last things that you'd like to tell our audience about uh, OCHAP Waste in the area in Treaty 4 just before we close up here? Well, certainly, we, you know, we were glad to have, we were honored to have as our, our visitors here, coaches, athletes, and chaperones. You know, we had over 5,000 people come into the community here mm. for, for the duration of the week. So we're, we're, uh, we hope that, uh, you know, everyone had a good time, certainly. Uh, our, our leadership, we're very proud uh, 
and how honored to have visitors come and join us here. And, and we hope on Ochapaways that we were able to provide some good opportunity for our kids. And, and we hope that we were able to accommodate our friends and visitors uh, uh, with, a, with a respectful and, and warm reception. Awesome, Sheldon. Well, thank you very much. The Games has, has already been a success. It's not even over yet. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Cadmus. Yeah. Thank you. Our final story. One of the most important venues for the Summer Games, the food services. This place had three meals a day for six days. It fed over 2,500 athletes, plus a thousand other coaches and other participants for the Games. Resex was able to sit down with two of the main cooks for the Games. Check it out. I am at the Summer Games at the food services. I'm standing with Shirley and Michelle. Uh, two um, two uh, volunteers for food services. So Shirley, what are some of the meals that uh, you will be pre you have been preparing for the athletes throughout the week? Uh, throughout the week, we prepared uh, the fresh fruit, desserts, uh, fresh pasta, fresh pizza, a variety of meats, uh, fresh buns, fresh variety of salads, mm -hmm. eggs to all the athletes from all 13 tribal councils. 13 tribal councils, three meals a day. How many athletes do you think you feed per day? We, we figured that one day we, we served 12,000. Wow, 12,000. Do you give them big thick slabs of bologna? <laughs> no. no, no. So Michelle, I gotta bring you to this conversation. What are some of the duties that a volunteer does at food services? With food services, we do got to do setup, so we uh, get here early, like we're here 5.30 in the morning to do coffees yeah. and juice for the athletes. And then we do the setup, and at 7 a.m. we have our meals from 7 to 9, yeah. and then we have lunch from noon to 1.30, and supper from 5 to 7. Nice. Well, I had a couple meals here, and I got to say they were very good. Great, keep up the good work. Summer games have been a success from what I've been told. We have a couple more days, so the best of luck. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> what an amazing showcase of athletes, mm. um, coordinators, directors mm -hmm. for the First mm -hmm. Nation Summer Games of Chapways hosted. You know, they did an amazing job. I just, I can't believe all the talent that our, uh, our young athletes have and the unity of all of our people coming together, that was great. Did you have a favorite game? Uh, well, I'm a golfer by trade, so mm -hmm. golf has always been my favorite. I wanted to get down and watch beach volleyball. I mean, being a demonstration mm -hmm. sport, I wanted to see uh, how the athletes played, but mm -hmm. I was watching a lot of them on Facebook. They'd post their, their comments and pictures, and it Deadly. seemed like they had a good time. Deadly. I was following on Facebook too, and uh, super exciting just to see everyone get nice. involved and our communities come together and yeah. we you got know, some more years out These there. games have been going on for just about 30 years. 30 years, you know, dude, I'm not even 30. A lot. <laughs> You're telling the audience, <laughs> I'm available, I'm not 30 yet. But anyways, that's not what we're talking about right now. Um, the summer games, winter games are coming up as well. As well as the summer games, we also have a winter game, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is going to be an Onion Lake First Nation next year. 2016, guys, watch out for winter games. Yes, but just one last thing, I just wanted to mention that these summer games and winter games mean a lot to athletes. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Some of them come from First Nation reserves. This is their chance to unite. Yeah. This exactly. is their chance to, uh, to showcase a talent that they're good at. Mm -hmm. And some of them, this is the highest sport at the level that they will ever play. So this is somewhat mm -hmm. their Olympics. So great job on the Summer Games. Resex was there. We are really happy to be there. Yeah, sure. And if you have a chance to be in the future Summer or Winter Games, get involved. You know, they're always looking for volunteers. They're looking for coordinators. Mm -hmm. Or like Aaron, you went, you, you sneg. Cadmus, this isn't a rated R show. Yeah. You're one of the only people I've ever known to come home with four jackets. <laughs> one from Athabasca, one from Meadow Lake. Like, how? <sighs> like, that's talent. That's something you should be telling Res X. You know, I got lots of cousins now. <laughs> er? You know. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, thanks for watching Res X. Until next time. We're awesome. It's a great day to be Indigenous. That's right. See yeah. you later.